In this video, we're going to extract parts of a string and measure their length, and also find out why one of these functions might not work exactly as you think. Hello, I'm Philip Burton of filecats.co.uk. So let's take a string. So let's say, hello there, Philip. So that's just a standard string. Now, suppose I wanted the first five characters. Well, I can do this with a left function. So the name of the string I've got here, and then comma five. So that gives me the first five characters. Similarly, I can use right. So if I have the last seven characters, then I have my name. Now, suppose I didn't know it was five and seven characters I wanted. Well, I can use len. So len gives me the length of a string. So here we can see the length is five characters for hello, and seven characters for my name. So I could put this here at the end of the right. Instead of using seven, I have instead the length of the string. So there we are, I've just separated it out so you can see it perhaps a bit more easily. Now suppose I wanted the middle of a string. Well, there's a lot of languages which would use mid. However, SQL Server is not one of them. Instead, it uses substring, so a part of a string. So we need to say where we want to have the string from. So let's take there. So there is, oh, is this character number one or character number zero? So if it's character number zero, then the start of there would be position number six. And if it's one based, then it'd be seven. Well, SQL 7 is one based, so T is the seventh character in. And we're going to have five characters to have the rest of the word there. Now, suppose I was looking for the first space. Well, we've covered that in a previous video. I can use char index. So if I look for a space in this string, then you'll see that it comes after the sixth character. So to get seven characters, I could say, give me the first string of space and then add one to it. So this would work as well. Now we've covered char index in a previous video, so just going to skip any more of that, but quite often I use char index when I'm searching for a particular character and then I go to the next character and I use substring. Now substring can also get you the first few characters. So this substring one, comma five is the same as left comma five. So this gives me the first five characters. What if I wanted to substitute the right function for substring? So in other words, what if I wanted to have the right seven characters? Well, I need to work out where to start from. So I need to say, okay, what's the length of all of this? So that happens to be 19 characters. I need to subtract the length of Philip. So that's seven characters. That'll get me to character position 12, which is a space. And then I need to add one to get to 13. So the entire string is 19. I need to deduct seven minus one to get to the start of P. Otherwise I'll overshoot it and go to a space. So. Let's separate these onto separate lines. So where are we going to start from? Well, we're going to start from the length of the string, which is 19 characters. We're going to subtract the length of my name, seven characters. So that makes 12. And then we're going to add one to go from the space to the start of my name. So that would be the full length of the string minus the length of my name and then add one. So that makes 13 characters or the 13th character. And then I continue to the end of the string. So that is the length of my name. So seven characters. So that gives me the equivalent of right. 
But you can see it's a lot easier to use right. And in fact, it's a lot easier to use left because then you don't have to say comma one. But substring is much more versatile. Now, what if I didn't know how many characters I wanted to go for, but I wanted to get to the end of the string? Well, if I know that my string is not more than, say, 999 characters, then I put in 999. It will not result in an error, which some languages would. You can go further than you need to. Now, let's say I wanted to find out where there is. So there, it starts on the seventh character and it goes for five characters. So that gives me there. Well, you'd think that I would have exactly the same logic as before. I would have the length of hello followed by space. So that should be six characters. And then I add one to get to the seventh character. So does this equal six characters? And the answer is no, it only equals five. And the reason is it gets rid of trailing spaces. So that is not what we need. Now, if this is a non unicode string, so it's not something that I've put an N at the front, then instead of length, I could use data length. So data length doesn't get rid of these spaces that may not be needed. So do be careful of this. Len is not necessarily going to give you the right length if it ends with a space. So if I change this back to a len, you'll see I've got the wrong answer. Now, if it starts with a space, it will give me the right answer. It's just if it ends with a space. So do be careful. So I'm going to use data length instead. And again, be careful data length. If it happens to be Unicode, then it will give me twice as many characters as I need because this is the number of bytes. So I want seven and I've got six. So six gets me to here. So I need seven. I need to add one. So instead of the number seven, I say the data length of hello with a space and then add one. And how long do I need the five characters? Well, that is the length of there. So now let's have a look at this. So it gives me from the seventh character for five characters. So in this video, we've had a look at left, right, and substring, not mid, but substring. And we've also had a look at len, but when len might not work, if there is a trailing space at the end, in which case you might want to consider using data len. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button. And why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.